This is it. In just a few days' time, the rainbow jerseys will be handed out to the new kings and queens of cyclocross as the UCI World Championships unfolds in Fayetteville in the USA this weekend. It's the first time the championships have taken place outside of Europe since it was in Louisville, USA in 2013, which doesn't sound like that long ago, to me anyway, until we look back and we see that Vanderpool won the junior race, Sven Nace, the elite men's race, and Mike Turnison, the under-23 event. Although, some things never change, do they? Because that year, it was Mariana Voss who won the elite women's it race. Was. Anyway, we're already digressing from the preview show, sorry. Uh, coming up, we're going to be talking you through the timetable of events, the course, the favourites, and the all-important weather forecast. And our notoriously terrible predictions. Now, it almost goes without saying, but we'll have all the racing live on GCN+. Plus. It's going to be available throughout Europe, except for Italy, Belgium, Sweden, Norway and Denmark. And we're also very excited about the fact that we have the rights to show the race live in the USA too. So we hope those of you on the other side of the pond will join us for the show. And we do have plenty of shows as well. On Saturday and Sunday, we'll have a live build-up show before the first event, mid-race shows and then a wrap-up at the end. We will indeed. Uh, the racing itself, will take place over three days though this year, starting this coming Friday the 28th of January. And it commences with a brand new event, the Team Relay. Yeah, an experiment by the UCI and an interesting proposition at that. Each team consists of six riders, one elite male, one elite female, one under 23 male, one under 23 female, one junior male, and yes, you guessed it, one junior female. Hmm. Now each nation will decide which order they set their riders off in, but they will do a lap of the circuit each. And I'm actually really looking forward to watching that one because it's going to be incredibly fast, isn't it? And it's also going to be interesting to see what order each team chooses to set their riders off. Yeah, now I am no team manager, as you well no. know, but I would go with my fastest rider first, I think, to get a good position because you don't want to be having to pick your way through traffic, do you? Yeah, I'd go along with that, yeah. I think so. Si. Although the Dutch have decided they're going to give everybody else a chance in that race because Gerben de Necht, who's a real team manager, unlike you, Si, <laughs> said he wanted his riders to concentrate on the real races. Oh, fighting talk. <laughs> uh, anyway, the race for those nations that are competing kicks off at 12.30 local time on Friday, which is 18.30 GMT or 19.30 CET. The day after, we've got three events. You can kind of see why de Necht did actually say that because there are big ones, aren't there? Junior women's, under 23 men and elite women's races all the day after. They'll be at 11 a.m., 1 p.m. and 2.30 p.m. local time respectively. And then on Sunday at the same times, it's the junior men, the under 23 women and the elite men. We will go over favourites for each of those races shortly. But first, let's take a closer look at the course they'll be tackling. Now, the amazing thing about this venue in Fayetteville is that it's a purpose-built cyclocross track. Of course, there are some other well-known venues that add man-made elements to the natural landscape that's already there, but few are quite as bespoke to cyclocross racing as Centennial Park in Fayetteville. Yeah, the length of the course is three kilometers or 1.75 miles and features a 17% climb, two off-camber sections, a small rock garden type obstacle, which could force riders off the bike, steps, a corkscrew section of berms and a tunnel. Mm, sounds interesting, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Much better though than us describing it is for you to see it yourself. So I'll now hand you over to Hank, who recently took a ride around the course with Ella Noble, who knows a lot more than Hank about cross racing. So I'm joined by CX rider Ellen Noble. Uh, Ellen, what do we think about the course here in Fayetteville, Arkansas? Yeah, it's great. It's uh, super exciting to see Worlds come back to the US, I think, first and foremost. Um, I haven't gotten to ride the whole thing, but just the bits that I've seen are, uh, you know, it's fun. I feel like they've done a ton of work to make this course super dynamic. Are there any key features on the, on the course that you would uh, kind of look out for if you're riding the race? Yeah, I think we're standing on one of the features right now. Um, I think these stairs, I mean, they're they're pretty massive. We ran off them a couple times and not easy uh, at all. So I think that's going to be a decisive moment. And then, uh, you know, kind of towards the, the backside of the course, there's a really steep hill um, that's, I, I don't know how long it is, but it's definitely quite long. So I think that one's uh, definitely going to play a role in uh, kind of how the course shakes out. I mean, it's got to be said that it's going to shape up to be an incredible weekend. Don't forget to watch it. Tune in on GCN Plus. It's live and it's ad free and it's definitely going to be an incredible race to watch. I can't wait for it now. 
it looks like a really fun course, doesn't it? I've got it to does. say. Yes, but as we all know, the conditions of a cyclocross course can make it a lot less fun yes. if they're <laughs> adverse. Uh, this course is going to be mega fast if it's dry, which would mean very close racing with groups riding around it. But if it's wet, it's going to turn into much more of a slog with bigger gaps between all the riders. So now seems like a good time to take a look at the current forecast for the weekend. It looks like it's going to be a fast one. Doesn't it? There hasn't been any rain for a number of days now, and it's looking like there's little chance any coming this week either. I do love a fast course and therefore a fast race, though, I must admit. All right, so you've heard about the course and the potential conditions for the weekend, but what about the favourites? Well, with the men's, we unfortunately have to start by talking about who is not going to be there, namely Wout Van Aert and Mathieu Van Poel. Van Aert, who won pretty much every event he did this cyclocross season, has chosen to forego the extra travel and begin his preparation for the road season a bit earlier. Van der Poel, the reigning world champion, unfortunately has been sidelined with a back injury. We will of course have a brand new world champion this year, as none of the riders on the start line have ever won it before. Which is pretty exciting in itself, I think, isn't yeah. it? Now we do have at least four former under-23 world champions who will be competing in the elite men event though, including the two riders who will probably start as the favourites, Ellie Isabit and Tom Pidcock. Isabit has been in fantastic form for the whole season in fact. He's won seven rounds of the World Cup, including the final round last Sunday, and he had that series wrapped up with three rounds still remaining. There is no doubt, is there, that he's gone up a level this year, not just in results, but also clearly in consistency. Yes, that's very true. Uh, he did have a tendency in the past, didn't he, to start the season off with a bang and then fade slightly. But although he has had a couple of off days in the last month or so, he's still showing great form and he's certainly going well enough to win the world on Sunday. The question is, will the mental and physical fatigue of a long season, plus the travel, catch up with him on Sunday? Mm, we'll yeah. Wait and see. Yeah. The other big favourite is Tom Pidcock, who has had a completely different build-up. After taking a break at the end of the road season, he started his cyclocross season two and a half months later than Isabit and has only done 12 races versus Isabit's 33. A massive difference. That, yeah, isn't it? And whilst Isabit has continued racing over the last few weeks, uh, Pidcock took himself to a warm weather training camp in Mallorca with the Ineos Grenadiers to prepare for these world championships and actually only returned to competition last weekend. And he was right up there in both races. A uh, crash on Saturday saw his hopes of the win dashed. And then on Sunday, he was outpowered over the last lap by Isabit. Yeah, there is no doubt that he's more than capable of winning, though. He won his first two elite World Cups this season and he finished runner up to Van. And a pool two years ago in Switzerland. Which, did you know, is the only time a British male rider has finished on the podium at the Elite World Championships. Uh, Belgians, Gosh. meanwhile, have won it 30 times, which Whoa. is three more than any other nation. Ah, I mean, I kind of thought it would be more than 30, uh, given yeah. their dominance over recent years. Yeah, what you have to remember, though, is that Cyclocross World Championships only started in 1950. And it wasn't really dominated at all by the Belgians in the early days. In fact, they only had two riders on the podium at the Men's World Championships in the first 16 editions wow. of the race. And it wasn't until the 17th they eventually won gold with Eric de Vlaminck. Who went on to win a total of seven world titles. He was quite successful. He was, wasn't he? Eric de Vlaminck, wasn't he? Uh, they have won 12 of the last 20 editions of the race, though. And I guess Van der Poel and Stibar have been the thorns in their side, haven't they? Yeah, plus last boom. Don't oh, yes. forget him. Uh, anyway, we digress. Again, beyond Isabit and Pidcock, the other main favourites are Belgian. And personally, I would love to see Two Nuts take the win. I mean, he's just, he feels like he's that guy that doesn't quite get the recognition he deserves. But you're right, he does seem overshadowed by a lot of other riders, even though he's won 23 professional cross races in his career. And he's also been the bronze medalist at the World Championships for the last three years in a row. So I don't think he's going to want another medal for that collection. No. Uh, Michael Van Torn out is another capable of taking the win on his day. He's finished second overall in the World Cup Series this year, taking a big win in Namur along the way. And also to Lawrence Fake as well, who took a big win on Saturday. He did, didn't he? Out-sprinted, Tonart. Always overshadowed, Tonart, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Meanwhile, Dutch hopes will be pinned to Lars van der Haar. He's made somewhat of a comeback this season. Uh, his win at the European Championships in November was actually his first win in cross for two years. But he's backed that up with a win in the World Cup in Tabor and the National Championships just a couple of weeks back. 
back. It must be really annoying winning the European and national championships in the same year, mustn't mm. it? Yeah. You don't get to wear your national jersey and there's a lot of washing involved. Very true. In I, mean, I honestly can't think of anything I'd be more annoyed about in my life than being national champion and European champion at the same time. Spare a thought for last. <laughs> uh, anyway, van der Haar does have a history at the World Champs with a bronze medal the last time the race was held in the USA in 2013. Remember, we'll be testing at the end. Uh, and he also got a silver medal three years later, which was his last appearance mm. on the podium. Uh, beyond the primary cyclocross across nations of Belgium and the Netherlands, we should probably mention Marcel Meissen of Germany, Kevin Kuhn of Switzerland, and Felipe Ort of Spain. Uh, America, meanwhile, will field a seven-rider team with Curtis White, Gage Hecht, and Kerry Werner amongst them. Yeah, in the women's, it almost feels like it'll be another Dutch Championships but with a bigger price. They have absolutely dominated again this season, winning all but one round of the UCI World Cup. Including round two in Fayetteville, which was won by Lucinda Brand in those rainbow stripes. And she probably will start as the favourite this time too. Probably. Probably, yes. We'll get on to the other one that might be the favourite very shortly. Uh, she's done 27 races, Lucinda Brandt, this season, and won 17 of them <laughs> so far. Uh, she's finished off the podium three times out of those 27 races, and her worst result for the whole season Fifth. Yeah, however, she didn't win the Dutch National Championships. Part one. Yeah, yes, part one. Um, she was beaten by 19 seconds by Mariana Voss, who also got the better of her at the Hoogerheide World Cup. Uh, so Voss will start on Saturday, we think, as the equal favourite. Yeah, she won the elite women's title, as we said before, the last time it was in the US. And she's back to try and take her eighth World Cyclocross title. And her first since 2014. Although what is amazingly remarkable is that she won her first title in cyclocross 16 years ago. Whoa. I mean, that, was it 16 it years was. ago? Crikey. I wouldn't bet against her either. Uh, like Pidcock, she's not raced as much as some of the others, but she's won four of the nine races she's done and showed over the last couple of weeks that her form is on the ascendancy. Yeah, she looks dangerous, doesn't she? Uh, so in the Carmen Alvarado hasn't had her best season to date, but she was world champion just two years ago, so you can't count her out. Inga van der Heiden, Yara Kastelein and Manon Bakker make up the rest of the Dutch squad. Super team, really. It is. It? Absolutely it is, uh, and some of their best riders as well are competing in the under-23 event, which we'll get onto later. Um, so who can beat the Dutch? Well, the only non-Dutch winner of a World Cup this season has been Blanca Vass at Hungary. She's a phenomenal talent, still just 20 years of age, who also finished fourth at the Elite World Road Championships in Belgium last September. So if she's on top form, she'll be right up there. Yeah, she's on the cusp at the moment, isn't, he? isn't she, given the World Cup uh, race on Sunday. Uh, the USA also has a real contender for the medals in the women's race with Clara Honsinger. She took her first major European win at the Koppenberg Cross, no less, last November, and she pushed Brunt really close at the World Cup in Dendermonde on Boxing Day. Yeah, she also finished third at the Fayetteville World Cup in October, so she's proven on the course. And there's no doubt as well that having the crowd behind her on Saturday is going to give her even more motivation. It'd be great to see an upset in that respect, wouldn't it? And a yeah. home win. I'd love to see that. It does feel slightly strange, though, that we've got this far and not mentioned anyone from Belgium yeah. on the women's elite race. Uh, Sana Kant remains their best hope. She was world champion three years in a row from 2017 to 2019. But although she recently won her 13th Belgian title on the trot, she hasn't been amongst the front runners in the major race for the last couple of years or so. No, in fact, three of her last four wins have been at the Belgian National Championships. Um, finally, we've got to say Magali Rochette will be hoping to fly the Canadian flag high mm. as well. Right, just before we get on to the under 23, We'll make our predictions for the elite races. I'm going to go first go on. before you get inside. Uh, Tone Arts, who we both said we'd love to see win True. a little bit earlier on. I yeah. think he's going to take the men's race. And then in the women's, Mariana Voss. Like we said, she's got the momentum at the moment. I don't think anyone's going to beat her. No, fair enough. Right, I... I'm going to go for Pidcock, actually. I have a feeling that he was a little bit undercooked for the two races this weekend. Or maybe overcooked, because he did a high-volume training camp, didn't he, in Mallorca? Either way, I reckon he's going to sharpen up this week, and that's going to make the difference. Um, and then, in the women's, I'm going to go for Honsinger, I think. Home win. A home win. I just think that would be super cool. Wouldn't that be something? Well, she's not got to get acclimatised and used to the jet lag because she's been home a little bit longer. So that could be very interesting indeed. True. Uh, right, let's head over to our expert cyclocross commentators, Marty and Jeremy, for their predictions now, along with one or two of the GCN presenters. 
So my prediction for the Junior World Cyclocross Championships in the men's, I'm going to go for David Haverdings. And of course, in the junior women, we've got to go with Zoe Backstead. In the under 23 women, I'm going to go for Sheeran Van Anroy. Under 23 men, I'm going to go with Pim Ronha. Elite women, I think it's going to be Mariana Voss. And then the elite men, I'm going to go with Tone Arts. All right, Marty, so on my side, I'd have to go with Zoe Bagstead on the a junior women's side. David Haverdings, I agree. He's got to be the favorite based on his results at the Junior World Cups that take place. Uh, we didn't see him in Hugerheide, so we haven't seen him in a little bit of time. He last won Flamanville, but I still think Haverdings is your, is your huckleberry for the under-23 title there. Definitely the favorite. Now, on the under-23 women's side, I'm picking Puck Peterson. Okay, that's probably, you know, it's going to be a little bit... A little bit of a conspiracy theory there. There's going to be a lot of potential winners. Fem Van Empel. Um, you've got also Sharon Van Android. But my pick for that is Puck Peterson. On the under-23 men's side, I really would like to see something special from Cam Mason. Of course, Pim Runhar, uh, Niels Van Der Puta, Mies Hendricks, uh, Emil Verstringa. There's a lot of riders that can do something special there. But I'd really like to see a good ride from Cam Mason. And I'm putting him at the top step of the podium. Um, on the women's side, well, it is Mariana Voss, of course, but I also think that there's something here for some of the American riders. Clara Hansinger, Magali Rochette, I think definitely could do something special. Maybe the victory is just out of reach, but a podium position for those riders potentially. But also, you can't discount Lucinda Braun. Braun on form right now and is going to bring all of the confidence from a really good season. But I do think that Mariana Voss is the favorite. On the men's, uh, on the men's side, ugh. This is, this is tough. This is more up in the air. We've got an on-form Lauren Sweck. We've got a big a lot of big names coming in. Uh, we've got Lars Vanderhaar, of course. Pidcock, everyone thinks that he's the favorite, but his form in the last weekend in the run-up after doing a big week of training with the Ineos Grenadiers is more uh, variable. It's not exactly where I would have pinned it to be, but he said in his last interview that he's definitely got something special. So my pick for the elite men's race, it is Tom Pidcock, and well, those are my predictions. So my pick for the upcoming Cyclocross World Champs in the Elite Men's, I mean, come on, it's got to be Tom Pidcock, hasn't it? However, if it's incredibly wet and muddy, I'm going to go with two nerds. And in the Elite Women's, um, Lucinda Brand. I mean, it seems like a no-brainer. She's won like six of the Cyclocross World Cups so far this year. Hmm. What do you reckon, Bust? Hmm. He's not so sure. In the women's race, I'm going to go for Lucinda Brand. Hopefully that's a safe bet. And in the men's race, of course, do it for Yorkshire, Pidders. Ellen Noble, World Cyclocross Championships. Your predictions, please. Elite men. Tom Pickard. Elite women. Lucinda Brand. Interesting. You can let us know who you think is going to win by voting on the app. We will put links to that in the description below. Just before we finish, we'll go into the age categories though, and onto the under 23 to start with. And the women's category could be the most fiercely fought race of the whole weekend, even though it's actually only the seventh edition of the under 23 women's world. Winner of two recent rounds of the elite UCI World Cup, Fem Van Empel has chosen to race in this category, as has the woman who finished just behind her at the penultimate World Cup, in the elite category, Puck Peterson. Mm. Both are only 19 years of age and they're already regularly at the front of the elite races. Now, it's not guaranteed that they'll head home with the rainbow jersey though, because their Dutch teammate, Shirin van Anroy, is also in with a major shout. Yeah, so she won the first ever junior women's world champs last year ahead of Peter C and has finished just off the podium in Elite World Cup as well this year. Mm, could be close amongst the Dutch women there. Uh, in the under 23 men's race, a lot of eyes will be on Thibaut Nace, uh, partly because of his name, you've got to say, but partly because of his results as a junior rider. Uh, he won the world in that category last year, but he's not really dominated the under 23 races this no, year. No, understandable given his age, but he has won three rounds of the X20 Bad Cameras trophy. However, he did crash hard, didn't he, at the recent national championships, which could have hurt his form as well as his shoulder, mm, which he definitely hurt. Yeah, he was lucky to be at the Worlds after that crash. Uh, watch out for his Belgian teammates, Niels van der Putten and national champion, Emil Bestringer, who I think are probably going to be the favourite, given his recent form. Uh, it's actually been three years since a Belgian took the under-23 men's title, and the last two have gone to Dutchmen, both of whom will be vying for the gold medal again this year. Pim Ronha and Ryan Camp. British fans can cheer for Cameron Mason. He looks like he's got a half-decent chance, given his results this season. Yeah, he has got a chance, definitely, of a medal. I uh, Meanwhile, in the juniors, 
Well, look no further than Great Britain's Zoe Baxter as favourite for the women's race. She won every World Cup junior race that she started this season and has been up there with some of the best in elite races this year too. In fact, she lost out on the World Cup because she couldn't go to the final one because she had COVID, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, really bad. Uh, in the men's, Dutchman David Harverdings will start as favourite, having won every World Cup this season. Twice runner-up to him, though, was Nathan Smith, who will represent Great Britain. And that, I think, brings our big preview to a close. However, if you want even more, it's actually a big written preview that you can find over on the GCN app. We are all set for a fantastic weekend of racing and we hope you will be joining us there. So see you on Friday on GCN Plus. Although just before we go, do not, do not, do not forget that you can catch daily highlights of the Mallorca Challenge this week as well and catch the first live pro race of the season on Sunday at the GP Marseille. Road is starting. Happy days. All right, that's all for now. We'll see you soon.